Hello and welcome to this SRC Learning Essential series video about BGP Route Reflector. If you are not familiar with the Service Routing Certification Program, you can learn more by visiting our website at www.networks.nokia.com src. In the following presentation, we will first describe the purpose of a BGP Route Reflector, or RR. We will define client and non-client pairs and then explain how a route reflector handles routes received from a client, from a non-client, and from an eBGP pair. In our lab, we will configure a route reflector and verify its operation. Normally, when implementing BGP, every BGP speaker in an AS must have BGP pairing with every other BGP speaker in that AS. As the number of routers increases, the control plane overhead increases exponentially. A route reflector is used to reduce the number of iBGP sessions in an AS because each router is now required to have an iBGP session with only the RR. The AS on the left includes four routers and does not use an RR. A full mesh of iBGP sessions is required with a total number of 4 times 3 divided by 2 equals 6 iBGP sessions. The AS on the right also includes 4 routers, but one of the routers acts as an RR. In this case, the total number of iBGP sessions is reduced to 4 minus 1 equals 3. When using route reflectors, iBGP speakers are classified into three groups. Route reflectors, route reflector clients, and regular iBGP speakers or non-clients. An RR and its clients form a cluster that is uniquely identified by a 4-byte cluster ID, and pairs that are not part of this cluster are considered non-clients. With route reflection, the full iBGP mesh is required only between RRs and between RRs and non-clients. Client pairs should have iBGP sessions only with the RRs in their cluster and therefore do not need to have sessions with each other. When a full mesh of iBGP sessions is used, the iBGP split horizon rule is applied. This means that a router does not advertise a route learned from an iBGP pair to other iBGP pairs within the AS. However, when an RR is used, the iBGP split horizon rule is disabled for the RR clients. The RR can advertise a route learned from an iBGP pair to another iBGP pair, and in such case, we say that the RR is reflecting the route. Note that route reflectors do not modify any of the BGP attributes when they reflect a route, except for the originator ID and cluster list attributes, which are discussed later on. So when a route reflector receives a route for a specified prefix, it first selects the best path from all paths received. The best route is received from a non-client pair. The route reflector reflects the route to all its defined client pairs. The route is not propagated to other non-clients because they are part of the full iBGP mesh and would have received it from the original non-client pair. The RR would then also propagate the route to all eBGP pairs. If the selected best route is received from a client pair, the RR reflects the route to all its defined client pairs, including the originator, and propagates the route to all non-client pairs and eBGP pairs. A best and used route received from an eBGP pair is propagated to all iBGP pairs and all eBGP pairs, including the pair that sent it. Note that the sender eBGP pair will reject this looped route. A route reflector removes the full mesh requirement by disabling iBGP split horizon for its client pairs. 
When an IBGP learned route is reflected to another IBGP pair, the AS becomes vulnerable to route update loops due to possible misconfiguration. Two new optional non-transitive attributes are introduced in an RR environment for loop detection and prevention, originator ID and cluster list. These attributes exist only when an RR is configured. They remain internal within the AS and they are not propagated to external pairs. The originator ID is used for loop prevention within an AS when route reflection is deployed. The RR that first reflects a route sets this attribute to the router ID of the router that originated the route into the AS. Once set, the originator ID remains unmodified. If a router receives an update that contains its own router ID in the originator ID field, it discards the update. In the diagram, AS65550 sends an update via the eBGP session to router RA. RA then propagates the update to RR1 with no originator ID. RR1 sets the originator ID to 10.16.10.5, which is the router ID of the originator RA, then reflects the route to its clients RA, RB, and RC. The cluster list attribute carries a sequence of cluster IDs of RRs that the route has passed through. Every time a route is reflected, the RR prepends its cluster ID to the cluster list attribute. If an RR receives an update and its local cluster ID is already contained in the cluster list, it discards the update. Note that this attribute is only used by RRs because clients and non-clients are not aware of the cluster ID. In the diagram, AS65550 sends an update via the eBGP session to router RA. RA propagates the update to RR1 with no cluster list. RR1 prepends its local cluster ID 10.16.10.1 to the empty cluster list then reflects the route to its clients RA, RB, and RC. Next we will move to our lab to complete this case study. OSPF and LDP are enabled within the Autonomous System 65000. We will enable BGP and configure PE4 as a route reflector with PE1, PE2, and PE3 as its clients. We will then verify route propagation throughout the topology. Let's start the lab for BGP route reflector. First step is to configure PE4 as a BGP route reflector. Now to do that, we must configure a cluster and specify the cluster ID, which is 101010104 in this example. Then we add the client pairs PE1, PE2, and PE3 by configuring their addresses in the cluster. So here on PE4, configure router BGP group, I'll call it IBGP. Type internal and the cluster 10.10.10.4. And now to add the clients. Neighbor. 10.10.1, so PE1. Back. There's PE2. And PE3 and no shutdown. Next we must configure the IBGP sessions on each client. Now to save time I've already configured this on PE2 and PE3. So over to PE1 and note that there is no special configuration required on a BGP RR client. So configure router BGP group IBGP Type internal and just one simple neighbor command. And that is to 10, 10, 10, 4, which is the route reflector.
The RRN clients are now configured, so let's verify that the IBGP sessions between them are established by heading back to the route reflector and running show router BGP summary. And if we scroll down, we can see that there is an IBGP session to each of the clients, so PE1, PE2, and PE3 with a family of IPv4. Now recall that by default no routes are automatically advertised by BGP, so I've pre-configured a BGP policy on PE1 to advertise the network 192.168.1.0/27. So over to PE1 where we can view the policy, configure router, policy options, and info. And here we can see a prefix list called prefix1 for the prefix 192.168.1.0/27 and a policy statement called BGP routes which accepts the prefix1. Configure router BGP info and the policy is not applied, so we can execute group IBGP export the name of the policy, which is BGP routes. So let's go back to PE4 and run show router BGP routes 192.168.1.0 27 and hunt. The ribbon shows that the route reflector did receive the prefix from 10.10.10.1, which is PE1. The rib out shows that PE4 then reflects the prefix to all its defined client pairs, including the originator PE1. So there is PE2, PE3, and the originator, PE1. Also in the reflected route, we see that the route reflector sets the originator ID to 10.10.10.1, which is the router ID of the route originator, PE1, and it also includes its own cluster ID of 10.10.10.4. Note that the route reflector did not modify any other BGP attributes. So the next hop, for example, remains PE1. Moving over to PE2, we can run show router BGP neighbor 10.10.10.4, which is the route reflector, received routes. And this will verify the routes received from the route reflector. And this output shows that PE2 successfully received the route 192.168.1.0/27 from the route reflector. The route has a next hop of 10.10.10.1, which is PE1, and is flagged as best and used. And that concludes this video on BGP Route Reflector. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Content for this video was adapted from the Nokia SRC Border Gateway Protocol course. You can access the complete course via any of the three learning formats shown on this page, as well as get remote private access to a service router lab to complete the course lab exercises. If you are interested in obtaining an SRC certification, this table identifies the recommended courses and required exams for each of the five available certifications in the program.